Hey everybody, it's Keith with the L1 Automotive Training Channel. And you're in luck today, because you will not be seeing my face. Only my hands. So this is a 2001 Nissan Pathfinder. Had a good customer of mine uh, shop call and say, hey, we got a... Uh, a pathfinder that a rat chewed up some wiring on the injector and injector number four uh, no longer produces ground pulse from the PCM. We've got power all the way at the pin. Uh, once they fixed the wiring, they said they got power all the way to the pin at the ECM, but just the one injector number four isn't working. He's like, it's probably, a, I guess it's a driver. He asked if I'd ever seen it before. I said, no. Asked if I could repair it. I said, I have no idea. So he sent it to me. Um, so this is the PCM. Let me look here. I'll show you. So there are actually uh, three major MOSFETs on here that are multi-bridge MOSFETs. So uh, this unit right here, this front MOSFET is for the idle air control valve. We replace a lot of these because they fail often. The idle air control valve fails to a dead short and then it burns out the MOSFET. Um, it's just a multi-leg driver really, like a multi-leg IGBT or something. I'm not not uh, a whiz with any of this stuff, but that's my understanding is, is what that is. Um, now, there are two other ones here. I believe this one is for uh, active control engine mount or something, and this one is the one that is for our uh, injectors. Uh, now, I was able to determine that by basically uh, looking at a wiring diagram here. We can basically see that injector number four uh, goes to pin 107 on the PCM. Pin 107 is right here. Um, luckily this is an old enough board that all the traces are like super visible. So if we look at the pin location and then follow that trace out to here, uh, we can see the trace goes over and goes to this, um, test pad. That test pad is bridged over to this, um, MOSFET. So, uh, I went ahead and looked at the rest of the ground control wires from the PCM pin out for all the other injectors. They all go to this driver so uh, that's what we're gonna replace we're gonna replace this driver it doesn't look physically burnt in any way uh, but that doesn't mean that it's not internally damaged so uh, you guys won't see this video if it doesn't fix the car <laughs> welcome to the club uh, so basically this what's interesting is that these uh, MOSFETs for this idle air control valve are a NEC uh, 1560 H uh, I happen to carry those in stock and then I also carry the older style which were the STA 508s and I carry some 509s in stock as well but uh, looking at the numbers printed right here on the MOSFET which you can't really see but I'll show you when I get it off it is the same part number for all three MOSFETs so uh, he's in luck we've got him there we go you guys can see now um, that we've got we're zoomed in on the microscope here these pins across here are what goes to it. So uh, again, we're gonna start up with putting some high quality Amatec flux. Um, I don't have a good source for you. Most of the stuff you get off of Amazon for this is is pirated. It's not real, it's fake. Uh, it's knockoff junk. Um, so I get mine from Rossman Repair Group. I don't remember if it's rossmanrepairgroup.com, .net, .store, whatever. Um, so just Google Rossman Repair Group. It's like, uh, I don't know, 50 bucks for a big tube of this, and I usually just keep it in the refrigerator. It lasts longer. And then uh, we're probably going to go hot iron. So let me get some, let me get some captain's tape so I don't blow off these bigger resistors off the board. We're just going to put some Kapton tape. Super heat resistant stuff. Got all these microphones and crap in my way. Cameras. Can't really see. And we'll switch back. There we go. Um, so we're going to use it, and then as we get it all melted down, we're going to go ahead and bend those retaining tangs to be straight. Uh, 
All right, so direct heat is a little much for this thing, not liking where that's going. So we're gonna go ahead and go soldering iron. Um, And again, oh, got out of the screen there where you couldn't see. Whoa, whoa. Careful. Just trying to bend those. Retention tabs over. We want to do it in a way where we don't damage the, uh, the eyelets on the board. Oh, you guys can't even see what I'm doing. We're just going to have to go to this view because I can't do it around the microscope. Need a better microscope. All right, so that was frustrating. The phone kept ringing. Um, I kept having problems getting the solder off there, and I just so I just got done getting it off there uh, and cleaning it all. Um, anyways, so we got it all cleaned out as best we could. There's still kind of some some flux everywhere. Uh, I went ahead and reflowed all those resistors. That was near just because we ran a bunch of flux through them. So just kind of where we were at. But there's all the holes, all nice and clean and pretty. We didn't tear up any. Um, none of the via holes, they all look good and they're good and clean. I went ahead and ran over them with some wick and flux and pulled it off. Um, here's the other side. Let me see if I can probably have to change the focus a little bit. Let me, as you can see, all the holes are nice and clean. That is labeled IC25. And you can see the traces I'm talking about now, how they kind of go over to where you can see them. All right, so from this point, basically, we're going to just uh, flip this over, take the new unit, install it, and then solder it into place. Um, so I'll show you in a second, but these tangs are like really, really tall. So I'm going to take one of the legs and bend them over that way and one of the legs and bend it over that way so it doesn't fall out. That's kind of how you saw it before. Um, and let me get zoomed in. I probably have to change the microscope zooming again. Let me just get this back into play here and then we'll click back over and you can see so we've got one of the tangs bent this way and uh, the other one bent this way and that is holding that chip from falling out. You can see that kind of I can kind of bounce it around and it isn't falling out. So from this point, now we can just heat up the stem, add a little bit of um, high quality solder, reason kester, um, some flux. I'm gonna start at one end, heat the pad and the stem up. Add a little solder.
and we're just going to do this for each one of the little sections as we go across. We'll probably clip them clean when we're done. And hopefully we have a nice good result. Get some more solder here. All right. Clean all that up. All those look good to me. Um, so we're going to go ahead. I'm going to go get my flush cuts, clip those off, clean the flux off the board, and we'll reconvene back. Um, but basically, this is kind of where we're at right now. So I'll uh, get this wound up and out of the way. We'll be right back. All right, so let me clean this off, and then uh, we'll zoom in with the microscope. So let's go to our uh, microscope view. We're going to take a look here. Get it positioned correctly. Arr. All right. So those are that one looks funky because the light's hitting it directly on top of it. Um, this one right here. But IRL looks good. That means in real life. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me on this one. Uh, we'll put it back together, get it all boxed up, and uh, see if it fixes the car. All right. See you next time. Like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. If you want to see some training on diagnosis and uh, a little bit of EEPROM work, not as much board repair training on the website, uh, check out l1training.com, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.